Hello, I'm Hish Cho, and we need to sit down and talk about Star Wars, because it keeps getting increasingly ruined to the point where it's not really that usable a universe. Even one of the most, I think, touching and appropriate things that was done recently on The Mandalorian, and spoiler warning, if you don't want to hear spoilers, don't listen to this. I'll put it in the blurb too, but... If you don't want spoilers, definitely don't listen to this because I'm going to go through spoilers of Star Wars all throughout all the films, series, all this stuff. You ready? Everybody still here that doesn't care about being spoiled, great. I think it was a beautiful thing that Luke Skywalker was able to take the child with him. And I think that that was an especially beautiful gesture because... Some friends and I were playing in an online text-based role-playing game, and I had gotten talked into playing uh, Anakin Skywalker. And my friend Wolf, whom I mentioned in the Four Wolf tribute video, was playing Luke. And he played him perfectly. You know, the farm boy from Tatooine that grew up to become a Jedi. In fact, a Jedi master. And so it was very beautiful, in a personal sense, to me, to have Luke Skywalker take the child with him, because in the roleplay, one of the last things that we got to do was introduce the child, who had been given to Luke, basically. And it was a very good scene, it was a very enjoyable scene, and I just wish it hadn't been the last we were able to do. But it made me feel very good to hear that Luke had come in and had taken the child with him, because that seemed appropriate. That is an appropriate thing to have had happen. But one of the biggest problems with Star Wars is the fact that so much of it has already been ruined, and knowing how the story goes in a lot of the official output makes it no fun when these moments come up. So while I am personally very satisfied by that one little bit, I have to also put it into context of the greater franchise and how it's being horribly mishandled, and how it has been horribly mishandled. We don't deserve Mark Hamill coming back to reprise his role if we know that it's going to be utterly ruined by what Disney did with the sequels. In fact, while I think that The Force Awakens is probably the most serviceable of the sequels, and while I do like elements of all of them, basically that completely ruined and completely devalued and belittled literally everything everybody fought for and <laughs> worked so hard to accomplish in the original trilogy. And it seems like that is a trend of Star Wars. Bring into question and devalue everything all of these characters did in the previous series of films. And that's why I think it is a bad idea to follow the trend that George Lucas started. When Lucas made his original trilogy, a lot of people really, really powerfully loved it. And part of that, I firmly believe, was George's attitude at the time of, as long as it doesn't directly contradict anything in the movies, have at it create, be creative, be fans, have fun with it, make it your own. And that is why I also tend to regard Revenge of the Sith as the worst Star Wars film. Because not only was it made by George, and made by George in one of the worst times of his life, he was totally mentally unstable, even LucasArts were, they had a mad pooper. They had someone who would come in and wreck their bathrooms with poop. And most of them thought it was George because he was just losing his fucking mind. If you can't tell your story, if you can't do a decent job, and you're getting down because people aren't liking what you're doing, just stop doing it. You've made enough money, you're more than successful enough, just let it go. Let the fans make out of it what they will and stop trying to give them something that is you wanting to tell your story in your way. I've said this in a couple of other videos too, you cannot have a fan fiction type approach for this sort of thing, because you are not doing it for just yourself. With the original trilogy, and the extended universe, that was created and cultivated and maintained by fans, you cannot just say, 
okay, we don't have that anymore. You don't get to do that anymore. We're going to explicitly lay out all these things so that you can't contradict them. That's why Revenge of the Sith was such a piece of shit. Because it was saying, here's all these characters that you love and that you're interested in and that we've given you stakes in and involved you in the development of these characters and we're going to explicitly get rid of them in a horrible way so that you would be challenged to do anything and make them exist in the extended universe because I've decided I'm pissed off at the fans. Like, Revenge of the Sith was basically just a big fuck you to the fans. And that's really unfortunate because all of the negative backlash, basically, was George's fault entirely. By the time the prequels came around, he had made such a name for himself, and Star Wars had become and been maintained as being such a massive part of popular culture, that when he was making the prequels, nobody really dared to tell him, George, this isn't working, this is stupid, you need to do something different. He did end up doing a lot of that because of some things that were poorly received, like the midichlorians thing. But he made that too much of a trend. In fact, instead of allowing fans to just fill in the gaps between the story he wanted to tell, he ended up trying to get the fans to like what he was doing, so he would often abandon or just drop things that were really actually major parts of the story. And the prequels were so problematic because they were so far between each other and they missed major events that were huge. Why didn't we have a film that was based around the fucking Clone Wars if they were so important? And don't tell me about the TV series because goddamn, that does exactly the same shit that Revenge of the Sith does. It brings in marvelous characters just to completely kill them off so that you can't do anything else with them. It makes everybody look like an idiot and an asshole, and I'm just not here for it. I know a lot of people were really excited to see Asuka from Clone Wars in The Mandalorian, and it was neat to see her realized as a live-action character, and I'm sure that there is some salvaging to be done with that character, but I've never really liked her. I've never really liked the concept. A lot of the Clone Wars show is very fan fiction y to me, and it also has that same contempt that George seemed to have in Revenge of the Sith. It was a complete mess of a story, and I'm not going to get into that here because I've already talked about it. I will link the video in the end thing that YouTube does. Or you can look it up in my list of Hushi Talks videos because I obsessed about Revenge of the Sith and what a bad movie I thought it was. But it's that same sense of contempt that ruins and undermines things that went before it. And that's what really bothers me. One of the things that bothered me the most about Revenge of the Sith was the treatment of Padme's character. She gets to do basically jack shit throughout the whole film and then dies even though she wasn't supposed to have died at that time at all. When I was watching Return of the Jedi, one of the things that always stoked my imagination, in part because I always love Princess Leia and of course I adore Carrie Fisher, her performance when talking about their mother was just sublime. It was beautiful and very touching. It's one of the most touching parts of that film, and I dearly love Return of the Jedi. It has problems, but I love so much of that film. But Revenge of the Sith makes Leia look like an idiot, or like someone who doesn't really have a good memory. Either way, it completely undermines one of the most meaningful development scenes for the character, which I absolutely resent. I hate that. And I am 100% sure that it was George having forgotten what he explicitly wrote in that particular movie script and just trying to go for something that he thought would tie up the prequels so they wouldn't be able to do anything more with them. Brilliant. Great job, Uncle George. What's really sad about this is that there are so many ways to fix this and so many ways to just say, no, that, that would be stupid. Why don't we use this instead? And I've said it so many times. When you kill off a character, you are basically taking that character out of any potential future interactions, which is usually really stupid. Oftentimes, every character will be someone's favorite, 
And yeah, I know that by that point, George was just done with Star Wars. He was fed up. He was not inspired. The things that seemed cool to him before, he was really finding weren't really cool to him now, and they did not age well. It was a meaningless gesture to follow the story of Anakin. We knew how it ended. And he's a horrible person. Like, Darth Vader is an irredeemably horrible person. He gets a moment in Return of the Jedi... And it's sort of like a, oh, you know, sort of a feel-good moment. But we cannot forget what horrible things he has done. And even if he is somewhat redeemed by his final actions and by his realization that he has become a monster, it does not in any way answer for all the horrible things that he has done, most especially outlined in Revenge of the Sith. Like, like this is this is just completely beyond redemption. This is a character who, while cool and scary and a good villain, was also an absolute monster. He was a horrible person. He was an abomination. Darth Vader should always have remained dead. There was nothing redeemable about him. He was not even Anakin Skywalker any longer. He ceased to be Anakin. And while I do take exception with them altering the Force Ghost at the end of Return of the Jedi, it is sort of like that. Anakin basically did die in the prequels. He was no longer around. Darth Vader was this entity that took over who he was. And I've said it many times, Kate Bush said it best, we reincarnate often several times in the same lifetime. We become different people who are still the same people, but very different. But the prequels just serve to make Anakin and Darth Vader more of a separate dichotomy. Anakin did not really turn into Darth Vader. Anakin was sort of muscled out of the story by Darth Vader. He didn't so much transform into Darth Vader as he lost his fucking mind and this monster killed him and took his place. And now we have this... Obi-Wan series that they're getting Hayden Christensen back for when he's not even going to be playing. Like, why would you ever get Hayden Christensen to play Darth Vader? I don't think he's a bad actor, but I do think George is a pretty lacking writer and not a great director. One of the reasons why the original trilogy was so good is because he got really good actors overall, who worked really well together and brought so much personality to the characters that they represented. In the prequels, that's not really the case, and George is not a good enough director and the material is not good enough to really expect someone like Hayden was at the time to excel at the material. It was just a mess. The prequels were a fucking mess, and why would you go back and disturb this man after he has had his life basically turned upside down, in many ways ruined, and he has retired from acting, largely because, I think, of that whole bad experience on the prequels? Why would you bring him back to portray a character he did not portray before, but now he is supposed to portray? That does not make any sense to me, especially since Obi-Wan and Darth Vader were not supposed to have had any contact since Obi-Wan left Anakin on Mustafar. It's just adding more to the story that doesn't need anything added to it, and it doesn't lend itself well to that addition. It keeps ruining the characters and making them worse, and it doesn't make any sense to do it. Most of these stories are stories we don't care about that don't need to be told, and in any case, horribly contradict everything that's been established. Why would you even bother getting Hayden Christensen specifically to play Darth Vader in an Obi-Wan series when they're not going to have any meaningful interactions if it's anything like what we know the universe was like. And even if they do have meaningful interactions, I am 100% sure that's going to devalue the entire confrontation in Episode 4. I will say I am really glad to see, finally, a series about the High Republic, which is really what the prequels should have been. They should have been about the High Republic, because that's what everybody really wanted to see. Not a story where we know the ending and we know how the people end up, and they're not good people by the end of it. But really, there's so much wrong with Star Wars, and so often the spin-offs, the stuff we see trying to continue the story, just makes it worse. 
Either that or it completely undermines what it did do well, like George in the prequels, basically. I do have a love for The Phantom Menace, and I do still think that it is the best composed and most coherent of the prequels, but it's not without its problems. But by the time you get to Revenge of the Sith, it's completely irredeemable. The prequels have just basically shit all of their potential down their leg. Thanks a lot, George. What makes it even worse is that Revenge of the Sith in particular encourages one of the worst qualities overall of Star Wars, which is that of Horrible deaths played lightly. There is so much death and destruction and misery in Star Wars. And while I do think that sometimes it helps not to dwell on something like that, unlike, say, the horrible drudgery that is Rogue One, possibly one of the most miserable spin-offs of anything ever, but these stories are so violent and so unpleasant, and they don't really need more of that. They shouldn't be leaning into violence and unpleasantness. These were based off of sci-fi serials of the first half of the 20th century. Most of them did have that kind of casual disregard for people getting blown up and shot by laser beams and things like that, but a lot of them didn't really dispense with a lot of their cast very casually because they had something to do in the story. And while sometimes that would happen, usually it was more of a focus on swashbuckling adventure rather than the miseries of war. But so much of Star Wars since the original trilogy has been seemingly obsessed with killing off and brutalizing characters for no real reason. And these are characters that could often contribute to the story meaningfully more later, but just are never given the chance. But all that aside, the one thing that I would like to leave you with is I really wish they would stop fucking with Star Wars. Just stop doing it. Disney is not doing a great job with the franchise, and George won't do a better job unless he has just come a long way as a person, which he may have. It's been like, I don't know, 10 years. So maybe he has become a better person and more able to deal with the fandom. But Disney needs to re-establish the extended universe, needs to go more with a permissive, fans need to be able to do what they want to do with this particular property, or else it's not going to last. This exclusivity with games too, with EA, bad choice bad idea. There was that adorable mini Death Star game, which they shut down inexplicably, you know, totally shafted the developers as well, and you can't even get it anymore. They've had all these games throughout the years, and it has been mostly either Disney or Circumstance that has shut them down, but usually it's Disney. Disney are terrible at having something where they clearly want more than it's giving them, and they will shut shit down just out of the blue for no real reason, but they'll let EA put out middling, mediocre at best content, or stuff that they don't really intend to support, not really that much, and there's so much, there's always something that could be fixed with any of EA's output that would just drastically improve quality of life in all of these products. Pretty much everything I've played of Star Wars that EA has put out has been, at best, it's good, but... And that but is exactly what makes games have longevity and long-term playability. But Disney really needs to get its head out of its collective ass and stop fucking over developers. Stop just using EA for your games, too. It's not working... They don't put consistently good things out, and you could do better. In-house, I might add. And why aren't we seeing anything concentrating on the droids? Or the porgs more? Anything. We've seen barely a couple of little animated series that were cute, but it just isn't enough. If you're gonna market something, market the hell out of it. Stop letting these characters be sidelined or treated poorly by the narrative or anything else for that matter, and actually start to focus on making them prominent. Because you know what people want to buy? They want to buy characters and things that they like. The droids and the porgs, the Ewoks even, even if some people hate them, I don't know why, I've always loved the Ewoks. All of these things were designed to be lovable and enjoyable. And they are. Lothcats, the Crystal Foxes, 
so many beautiful, amazing living things that are created by a genius group of designers. Why are we not seeing more of that? Why are they not focusing on the things that are actually fun or interesting or exciting? Even just a little upbeat. It's really unfortunate to me to see something that was once so good, and largely because of the fans making it into something as spectacular as they could because it resonated with them. But this grand thing is being driven into the ground by a corporation that is barely fumbling its way through this century. Disney are so obsessed, and fortunately are getting less obsessed, with both rehashing things needlessly and trying to pander to the Chinese movie-going public, which is a complete waste of fucking time. And at least they're sort of starting to see that, but they've already fucked up everything. They've already fucked it up. And even the fucking Lego Star Wars holiday special was horribly depressing, incoherent, and decided apparently to imply that Poe Dameron, who was played specifically by his actor as gay and interested in Finn, they decided to imply that he was hanging out with some girl. I don't even know who she was. <laughs> I was watching it with a friend and I had to ask him who the hell that was. But it's clearly implying that they have something going on and it's just like, wow, that's incredibly homophobic and also incredibly, incredibly counterproductive. You are just completely fucking with the fans here. As usual, the Porgs were the best part of the holiday special. And frankly, compared to the original holiday special, I would still rather watch the original. And that was crazy. But at least I know now that if you are as high as George was when he wrote it, then you can get a lot more enjoyment out of it. So take of that what you will. But all that aside, why do we have to constantly get rid of characters that could contribute so much more to a story? These are characters that they may not have a lot to them in most of the things they appear in, but they can stoke the imagination, and people should be able to do that. Fans should be able to do that. That's what you're supposed to do with a major, major series like that. Set up the playground, and then let people who love it build you an empire. And that's what the original trilogy did so well. All of that fan community, all of that culture, the society, really, that sprung up around that, all of that stuff was how to do it. By the time the prequels came about, George had become a very different person, and the entire fan environment was very different. The landscape had changed, and it continued to change as more of those prequels started to give you a lot less wiggle room. And then Disney came along, and you know what they've done. But something needs to change. Something needs to change, and it needs to be even just a simple change to be more engaging to and more permissive of fans. As it is, Star Wars is being driven into the ground by a giant corporation that does not give a shit about its fans or it. There are some things that have been created that are wonderful, that I adore. I love the Porgs more than just about anything in Star Wars. I love BB-8 almost as much as I love R2-D2. And I love R2-D2. But we're going to have to demand a better standard. And I am seeing hope in The Mandalorian and things like that. It's very obviously, of course, something that is in conflict with Disney and... The entire Mandalorian crew has been fighting with Disney, from what I understand, so that's great. You know, the one thing that they actually allow to be done decently, or remotely right, of course we gotta fuck with it. But if I can impart anything to you, if I can leave you with anything, I want it to be this. Enjoy everything like Star Wars, in your own way. It's the only way to really enjoy anything. You cannot just accept whatever someone gives you in the telling of a story. Part of a story is how you receive it. You are participating in that. Don't just be someone that lets someone, I don't know, shovel their story into your mouth for you to swallow. Be the kind of person that wants to take part in it, wants to experience every nuance of every bit of sensory input that it can give you, and then run with it. And that is what we need to do with Star Wars. We need to not be just idle consumers. We need to not be 
the people that just accept whatever someone tells us a story is. We need to stop being afraid to tell our own stories. And I, for one, am more of the old school, I think. I, for one, believe that pretty much all of the Jedi that we got to know in the prequels are out there somewhere fighting the Empire. Anakin himself may be out there somewhere, waiting to be awakened from his cryogenic sleep, because all that clone technology and the entire clone army subplot maybe shouldn't have been dropped after it was so conspicuously introduced, and then Obi-Wan, just despite knowing a lot of names involved, decided not to pursue it. Great, I'm sure that made Jocasta New feel really useful. There's a turning point, though, and that turning point is where your mind says, I've got a better story. How about this? That's how it could have happened. But how about this instead? And that's what we need for Star Wars, and pretty much all of our entertainment. We need to be able to take the reins at some point and have our own adventures, because there's no other way to make it so precious to us to make it into a truly marvelous work of art. You're welcome. See you again soon. Bye.